for me to just call up Dr. Steve Pachenik and ask him what he thinks is, is going on. I'll just do it on air. So, so much of what you see on this three-hour, four-hour radio slash TV show is behind-the-scenes stuff. I mean, you see me running back in here uh, during the breaks as different hack attacks are being launched, some successful, some not successful, uh, against InfoWars right now, with them posting an article that Erdogan had fled to a U.S. military base and been overthrown. Now, would you say that's because we're exposing Islamic caliphate schools in the U.S. they are trying to overthrow Erdogan? Would you say it's because the Syrian uh, electronic army, which is pretty much the Russians, keeps posting InfoWars links on hacked sites like the Washington Post, the New York Times, and Barack Obama's personal Twitter? I, I didn't do that two years ago. I didn't do that a year ago. I'm not asking the Syrians to do that. I don't want that type of traffic from a hacked presidential Twitter. Um, you know, we got our own traffic. We're not involved in criminal activity. Now, they are attacking these countries, so they've got a right militarily to do what they're doing. We're not involved. I'm an American. I'm not involved in any agencies, nothing. But I basically talk to everybody because this is what's going on in the real world. And we just had a guest on earlier that, you know, was just putting out the most ridiculous stuff. And nothing against the guy, but, you know, oh, the Russians are behind ISIS. Yeah, and I'm an Easter bunny from Pluto. I mean, you got the former head of defense intelligence coming out and saying two months ago that they were ordered to help create ISIS and protect them, and it's wrong, and it's crazy. And you've got Cy Hirsch's new excerpt coming out. Steve Pachinio sent me an email last week about it. Look at this. It's huge. Saying what he said, what others have said, what Colonel Schaefer said a week after Benghazi. To ship the arms up to uh, Syria from Libya to destabilize it. They changed the name of Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra to ISIS to confuse the public. The military said we're not going to be part of this. General Dempsey went to the White House and said we won't be part of it. And here it is, Cy Hirsch, two times Pulitzer Prize winner, confirming what we already knew. But it's, it's from him. But it was more that the generals were leaking info to Assad and the Russians the last three years. And he says it all ended with Dempsey leaving. That's not what I'm told. I mean, believe me, when somebody like Colonel Schaefer, who goes and testifies in secret hearings in Congress, he has to get authorized by the group he's with to even come on this show. I mean, you don't just think I have like a CIA whistleblower on like Tosh Plumley. And uh, point is, uh, there's all these different players and groups. And it's one thing to be able to, you know, arrest and SWAT team the former technical director of the NSA, William Benny, and try to intimidate him because he's on his own. But at a certain point, people push back. So there's all these different camps. So I'm going to ask Dr. Pachenik, A, just off his gut, who he thinks is trying to shut down InfoWars right now. And then B, looking at the situation with Russia. I mean, here comes Cy Hirsch saying what you said a month ago, word for word. You said, yes, we made the decision. We've been working with the Russians quite nicely to take out these people. Uh, there are other groups in our government that wanted to work with them, but we're not allowing that. And those aren't boasts you're making. I mean, you did head up the State Department psychological war operations. You did do, I'm not bragging, it's true, legendary stuff like the Camp David Accords, right through to famous hostage situations, right through to, you know, the Justice Department coming after you for work you did officially for the president uh, in uh, with operations in Italy uh, and, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, major operations, deaths of prime ministers, you name it. I mean, whatever went on, the point is, I don't want to get subpoenaed. I don't know. But now here you are. So, because again, you know, people, modern folks out there barely know who Donald Trump's name is, much less yours. So we're asking a real spy master what he thinks is going on here on air. I want to get your view on what's happening uh, with this whole situation and where it's going. Because it seems to me the whole narrative has collapsed in a beautiful, spectacular way. It's now kitchen table talk breakfast table talk that our government runs ISIS in the general public. The military is over the top angry and upset. It's causing a catharsis almost of such devastation to the neocons and the globalists that this is a grievous blow, I believe. I don't think they can put this back in the genie bottle. And then separately, then I'm going to shut up and get your take, sir. They're trying to just normalize it now and go, okay, we're going to get attacked by Muslims, radicals we brought in. And when they attack... We're going to take gun owners' rights. We're going to take veterans' rights. I mean, they're actually saying that. Uh, so then when they attack, they don't get in trouble for bringing them in. I lose my rights. You lose your rights. 
that dog isn't going to hunt. I mean, I know for a fact, and I'm not bragging, I don't even like being in this position, that major governors listen every day. I know a fact, huge amounts of Congress listen. Not that I'm even that special. Everybody else is too cowardly, too stupid in the media to talk about real stuff or to have people like you on. I mean, is this a Twilight Zone episode, Dr. Pachinik? No, not really, Alex. What's happened is you've created a paradigm shift in the media which occurred 21 years ago. And when I came on your show 14 years ago, and I categorically stated 9-11 was a false flag, stand down, people began to think and they began to understand because I knew this because I taught this type of attack. I knew the people in the Bush administration, the Cheney, the neocons, Wolfowitz. But let's go beyond that. What's happened is you have hit to the core of the continuous lies that the different administrations have been planning on the U.S. citizenry. And Cy Hirsch, quite frankly, and I, uh, we're not buddies. I've known about him, and actually I had a confrontation with him in an intelligence meeting. But I will guarantee you that what he is saying now, what he said about Osama bin Laden, and all of his articles, he's correct. There isn't one iota of distortion, not one iota of... Uh, lie. He's basically Cy parroting not, and then adding background not, to everything way, you say. He, he's backing he everything he you say. He not only corroborated everything I said, but he went into detail to talk about two other people whom, ironically, I had a confrontation with, but I also respected. And one was General Martin Dempsey. When I last met him, or I first met him, was the last day I was in the Council on Foreign Relations before I told you and the public, your public, that I was resigning. And I had asked General Dempsey 10 years ago or somewhere along that line, will you argue against the president of the United States, given the fact that we had admirals who did that in 48, we had generals who did that in the military during the Vietnam War? He categorically said he would. I absolutely respect General Martin Dempsey. I do not think he's a traitor. I think he's a great American, like many of our generals, who had to quietly dissent against a presidential dictum which, by the way, I have gone against repeatedly, but I was in a more junior position. But I, I absolutely agree with General Martin Dempsey, and I had also met Michael Flynn, who was then head of G2 Military Intelligence and became the Defense Intelligence Agency. All three of these men, I can corroborate what they say. I can vouchsafe for their integrity and their willingness, like many Americans, to defy what has been going on in the narrative. And you're part of that, Alex, and I'm not here to flatter you, but I will explain to you what they did. General Dempsey and Mike Flynn basically did a full analysis, and what that happens is you use SIGINT, uh, human, you use all the 16 agencies we have to do an assessment, or we used to call a net assessment, of what's happening in Syria. Because the administration, Obama had no really idea of it, Hillary Clinton had no idea, Susan Rice had no idea, Valerie Dredd, all of them had never been in the military. None of them had been in combat. And because of the mistakes that were made under Bush Jr. in Iraq, where we deposed Saddam Hussein, subsequently had chaos, we then went into Libya, thanks to Hillary Clinton and Susan Rice and Samantha Power, and we created a massive, massive uh, source of chaos where Benghazi was the focal source of the CIA transmitting and, 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 and sending weapons of uh, major weapons to the Turks and the uh, so-called mid, uh, middle rebels or the mid moderate rebels in Syria, but were really the extremists. And what was happening there was, in effect, uh, when the generals saw this happening and they saw that the civilians really had no idea of what was going on, Flynn and Dempsey, I can't corroborate their actual actions, basically said, look, we're not going to disrupt this in a political statement. We're going to disrupt it along the flow of information relationships. What Cy Hirsch was, said was absolutely correct. We have had a military-to-military -military relationship with the Russians that has been outstanding since 91. Now, contrary to the neocons, contrary to the narratives of civilians who would like to say they bombed the Russians, or it's a Russian... Uh, conspiracy, that's absolute. And that's why the political class wants to talk about war with Russia in these debates. They're so angry that the U.S. military is defying them. And I'm not trying to lionize the U.S. Army especially, but it's exactly what you said here a decade ago. They are literally the best patriots we've got holding back so much of this. 
Well, you have to understand. I mean, I when I worked in government, my my primary position was always as a military officer. When I went into intelligence, was trained in that at MIT and at Harvard. That was a secondary position, but I was proud to be in intelligence. And of course, then I am a psychiatrist. But my my loyalty has always been to the Republic, as as it has been for Martin Dempsey, as it has been for General Flynn, for many other generals who supported our American positions and understood that our civilian leaders, remember, most of them had not been to war. Clinton had never been in combat. Bush Jr. had never been in combat. And Osama and uh, Obama, that's a Freudian slip, had never been in combat. Yet we had Bush Sr. who'd been in combat. I worked with Secretary Baker who'd been in combat. I had Nixon who'd been in combat. I had Carter who had been in the military. So those who had been in the military as president had very good representatives who understood the capability of war and the limits of war. And our generals are brilliant at what they can do and they know what they don't want to do. And, and the great generals are not the ones who go to war. They're the ones who say, you know, what is it that we can do to stop yes, the Yes, sir. Let me throw this in then. How, how seismic is it that we've had a huge, basically, military counter coup against the civilian insane people who are like, like a, a, a compulsive gambler at a slot machine trying to conquer and start wars they can't win. I mean, this is such a big deal to have it confirmed that our own military went around Obama and the neocons and gave the Russians and the Syrians all the authorization and, and info they needed to defeat al-Qaeda and ISIS. And then I've met with a bunch of special forces people, current duty, you name it. They're all completely awake now. I mean, the system has a big problem. I don't see how they're going to put this back in the bottle. Well, I, let me put it this way. This is we call, I would call this, or we call this, a soft coup. A soft coup meaning that we haven't overthrown the president. We don't intend to overthrow the president. There's not a, a violence involved. There are not going to be guns in the street. But, Alex, at the same way you change the narrative of the media, what's happening now, thanks to the bravery of these men who've been in our military and our Navy, and also the men who were fired in Benghazi, and the stand down and AFRICOM and the naval officers who were involved. All these people stood up and had their uh, day in court and continue to have that. Some are heard, some aren't. But you have to remember, our democracy and our republic is a very fluid entity. It's not static. It doesn't stay. And I agree. So the truth is it. out in the public opinion. The military system-wide is saying no to the tyranny. Yeah, yeah. What is that doing to the more corrupt elements of the establishment? Well, they're getting scared. And what happened is because of your ability to articulate in our military willing to stand Please up. Please stop giving me the credit. Like I get 1% of the credit, sir. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm the not platform gets credit. it. I know, I know. Alex, we've known each other for too long. This is not, you know, we're not bragging here. We're basically saying because of that narrative, you have a man like Trump come forward. Whatever he may or may not be, he is changing the entire dynamics of the republic and the way they're getting elected. In effect, what he's done is to take away the underbrush of the corruption with the Bushes, the entire Bush family, the entire Clinton Well, family. let me stop you. You came on, and we'll keep you the next hour if need be, because we've got uh, who's co-hosting sure. next hour? Hey, David and I, we're going to go about 20 minutes the next hour. This is so important. No problem. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, and he'll co-host with us. This is so huge because... You know, as you know, you get these calls, I get these calls, congressmen, former congressmen. I mean, people know what's going on in government. They know there's this epic well, battle. They're Alex, just freaked out. I, I don't out. get a call like you do. What I get is two helicopters monitoring me two weeks ago. Sure, that's just a message. what I'm about to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't get a call like you get. I get helicopters that are monitoring me when I'm unloading a truck with books in it. I get subpoenas from the U.S. prosecutors in Miami-Dade County because the State Department and our FBI are upset about what I may say or I might do. You've got to remember there's one element here. No one is going to take you down, Alex. I can assure you that. You're just being, uh, you're just being played with as a kind of warning. You know, you can only go so far or do so much. But guys like me, they have them in their sights. And the reason for it is they know exactly what I was trained to do. My job is very simple. It was to do regime change without violence, without killing, 
and without assassination. 